A vigil and a shrine for a terrorist on the streets of Toronto. Sounds unbelievable, but believe it because it is what happened over the weekend in response to the U.S. airstrikes that killed Qasim Soleimani, that terrorist mastermind who led the offshoot of the Iranian government, the Quds Force, which was responsible for a lot of their attacks and proxy wars taking place all across the region. Now, after Soleimani was killed, there was a natural debate about whether or not this was the right choice by the Trump administration, what the repercussions would be, and so forth. Okay, fair enough. People are going to talk out public policy. Some people thought it wasn't a good idea. Others were celebrating it a lot. Then there were those who, their response to it transcended, let's just say, public policy discussions and military affairs and defense issues and just turned into flat-out terror worship. Now, Soleimani, it's fair to say he is a terrorist because the Quds Force, what he ran, is a designated terrorist organization that has been for a number of years. It is a branch of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, which is part of Iran's military. So if you're taking to the streets and you're waving the flag and holding up pictures of this guy and lighting candles in front of vigils for him, you are supporting a terrorist. And that is exactly what happened on the streets of Toronto this past week, and apparently in Edmonton as well, as reports tell. Hopefully not in other cities in Canada. Hopefully it was just those two, but you never know these days. So what exactly happened over the weekend? Well, first of all, in Toronto, there was a no war with Iran protest, and you kind of scratch your head, out, head at that a little bit, because a lot of the usual suspects, a number of NDP people, including a couple MPPs, other activists, and so forth, they all met in front of the U.S. consulate in downtown Toronto to do this no war rally. And even with that, I was kind of left scratching my head. This is generally something that people on the left will do whenever there's a potential looming military conflict, they'll do their anti-war protests, but clearly they're usually just anti-American protests, because there's a whole bunch of things other countries do all throughout the year that are preludes to war, could potentially lead to war, and for some reason we don't protest in front of their consulates and their embassies. Odd, odd way to look at all of this from these protesters, because these airstrikes, they were not considered preludes to war by the Trump administration. Donald Trump actually went up to the podium, gave a five-minute address, and said, we do not want war. This was a targeted, decisive surgical strike. We want to kill this guy, and we did it. So you can agree or disagree, think it was a good or a bad thing, but it was not an attempt to start a war by the Trump administration. So first of all there, I'm, I'm not exactly sure uh, what these left-wing activists were getting at while, while they were holding up these no-war placards. Uh, but the second part is, why did they not protest Iran doing all of these warlike moves throughout the past 20 years, the things that Soleimani was doing and the things that ultimately got him killed? Talk about the consistency there. Well, after that protest wrapped up later on in the evening, an organization called the Al Mahdi Youth Group, well, they gathered in that area to hold a vigil for Qasem Soleimani, where they were not being unequivocal about it or cagey about it. They weren't saying, oh, this is just a no war protest. No, they were being flat out honest that they were there to honor Soleimani. They described him as a hero of Islam in a post that they put up to social media up on Twitter. When I drew attention to this social media post, they took it down afterwards, I guess not liking the fact that people were hip to it and also that a lot of people were criticizing them for that. Now, this is not one single little fringe organization of a few people. Uh, the Almaty website shows that this is actually uh, a part of Pickering's broader Almaty Islamic Center. It's a larger facility. I saw that they recently uh, were successful in doing a fundraising drive to create a larger mosque, a larger community center that will get under construction uh, later on. Hundreds of people attending uh, this community center. So clearly not just one or two nut jobs in their Twitter accounts and, and on their Facebook pages, but uh, one apparently growing and thriving community. And it was a number of these people who showed up in downtown Toronto to erect this shrine to a designated terrorist. Wowzers. Now, here's the interesting part. Were these Iranians who were celebrating the killing of this Iranian figure? Maybe, maybe not. The Omadi Center describes themselves as being consisted of people from Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Africa, India, and Pakistan. Although what we do know is that a number of Iranian dissidents showed up at that event to confront these people and to denounce them. 
There are many Iranian Canadians who came here to Canada specifically because they knew the horrors of the regime in Tehran. They knew what Iran had turned into after the 1979 Islamic Revolution. They wanted nothing to do with it, and many of them and their family members had been tortured. A lot of political dissidents have been executed, murdered, held at the notorious Evan prison. You can say you don't support these airstrikes, fine. You can say no war in Iran, but to side with Soleimani, to side with this regime, what on earth are these people thinking?